You know, it's sort of funny when you're doing a video and you're looking into a camera that you're not accustomed to utilizing and you find that you look like a little red dwarf. And the funny thing is it's how the camera is recording you. It has nothing to do with how you look. It's not that you're all flushed and red, but it apparently is what happens in life, that you get all flushed and red when you're thinking about someone you love, I guess. But in truth, we have to look at how do we make a life worth living and retirement with heaven. We can either put monsters in the universe who monkey around with people's rights, like what I see going on all the time in Fishers and Noblesville, or we can tell those people to go to hell. Now, how do you do that? How do you tell a person who carries a badge and carries a weapon to go to hell? It's sort of a difficult concept because they are literally community servants, not well representing not only themselves, their own families, if you will, or their departments, or their chiefs, or their communities, but they're literally lying about what their rights are in someone's life. Now, when I talk about these things, it usually means I'm going to get harmed in some way, and I'm quite accustomed to that now, because someone has literally monkeyed in my stuff for a long time. They've literally deleted important files, they've deleted intellectual property, they've destroyed rights, and they literally think they have some sort of right to do it. I don't know any law in the land that empowers a person to take over someone's life as if they are the identity of that individual. So what we're talking about here is identity theft. And someone needs to understand that identity theft is still identity theft is still identity theft. When I talk to someone, it's my right to do so. When I talk to my legal heir, it's my lawful right to do so. When I talk to someone who's in my birth family, like my mother, it's my right to do so. When I tell someone in my birth family I don't want them near my life, it's my legal right to let them know that. You see, legal rights and lawful rights can be the same and different. And openly, then there's rights underneath God's house that all family members should really be getting along is true. But sometimes in life, people are selfish. Sometimes in life, people don't listen. And sometimes in life, people think their rights are greater than someone else's rights. The bottom line that they're not. Into the house of the Lord, every single individual soul has a purpose in life. And that purpose is both met and unmet by the people around them in their lives. If their life purpose is met, then they're soaring, literally content in every aspect of their life like I once was. But if they're not met, if their needs are not cared for by the people who are involving themselves in their lives, then that's sort of in the blame game, not at all. It's literally saying that some folks are not serving to their best abilities. You see, there's always someone who knows how to do something. For example, I'd like to learn how to re-sew something so that I don't have to do it by hand and make a mess of it. Using a machine might be quicker, it might be more efficient, it might be cleaner. Someone else knows how to do that. If I ask them how and they literally say, figure it out yourself, that's not exactly helpful. It doesn't help me finish a project. When I asked for information about a software package today, and it should have just been a five-second download, I was literally told, no, we can't do that unless we send it through an entire huge process. And I thought, wow, you could have solved the problem in a matter of under five minutes, and you chose to turn it into a lengthy process of denying someone of their rights to solve a problem. You see, that's the difference between someone who's a problem solver and a problem creator. A problem creator creates all sorts of litigation and all sorts of processes and all sorts of abuses that prevents a person from getting their projects and their tasks accomplished. A problem solver is someone who's looking for the fastest, most efficient way in order to handle something, and that's what they're doing. They're trying to make sure it gets solved. So there's the difference, straight and simple, between a problem solver and a problem builder, and that's what I'm talking about today. But if we talk about anything else, people might get upset. So let's just leave it at that. Problem solvers help people to solve the problems they choose that are important to their life to fix. Problem builders are people who put other sorts of problems into someone's life so that they can accomplish the things they're trying to do. That's it, plain and simple. Thanks for listening. Blake Henson, Blaze Communications LLC, talking about problem solvers versus problem creators. Thanks again for listening.